Hey everybody, this is Doug with Artfully Road. Welcome back to the channel, and in this video, we're gonna try the Evolution Power Tools 10-inch sliding miter saw. Let's put it through the paces and see what it can do. I have to say at this point, this is a paid promotion in the sense that Evolution Power Tools sent me this saw with the intention of me reviewing the saw. I get to keep the saw at the end of the review. So I also want to be upfront and honest with you is I actually enjoy Evolution Power Tools. I like their products, I like the quality, and I like what they've been able to do for me here in my shop. That being said, let's move forward and check out this saw. So here's what I've noticed right off the bat. It comes in a lot of pieces, which is neither good nor bad. I just wanted to make note of it. For starters, you have the rotary table base. You have a rear sliding carriage. You have the dust collection bag and a dust port adapter. You have a three piece holding clamp. You have the instruction manual. You have the miter handle locking knob. You have a rear cable guide clamp, two extension tables, the miter saw motor unit, a blade with instructions on how to put the saw together, and a larger version of how to put the saw together. For starters, I can say that I am more apt to follow a diagram than I am to like read all of this on how to put this thing together. So we're gonna try to go right off the diagram. Seems pretty straightforward. One of the first things they talk about is making sure that these little tabs are out. You can do that by pushing this button and then pulling out on the tab. They recommend using a screwdriver, but I've got fingers of steel. So when you slide the motor unit into place, You'll hear these little buttons snap. That means they've locked in. There's one on each side. Okay, so we're gonna attach the cable guide with the hole and the tab, and there's a screw hole and a screw hole here. So that would go here, and then your screw would go in. Take the nifty little tool that they gave you, tighten into place, and that keeps your cable out of the way. Okay, and this is pretty obvious. Thread in the miter locking knob until you can't thread it anymore. Now let's take a look at the extensions. They're going to go here at the edge of your workspace. You'll remove the bolts that are here. Okay, I find this annoying. I don't have enough space to make a full rotation to get this bolt out. so. Although not major, it's a pain in the butt for about five seconds. All right, and I think we're almost done. We've got to put the, uh, the dust bag on and we've got the, the clamp that we'll take a look at here in just a second. But everything else looks to be pretty good. This little Allen key tool that came with it there's actually a little spot back here for it, so it can live right there. Okay, so you have two thumb screws here. Um, one, let me get out of the way here. Two thumb screws here, and one is specifically for this clamp that drops into place like so, and you can lock that into place. Okay, so once that's locked in with this thumb screw, uh, you have additional adjustment here and that you clamp that when you're ready and check this out this is really nice push this button and this allows the threaded clamp to move freely up and down when you're at the height that you need it release and it will start clamping down so if you have to adjust things quickly you can do so I like that feature already. That, that is really cool. Okay, 
As far as the assembly process goes, that was fairly easy. And that was done solely based on just looking at the diagram. Um, not to say I would recommend avoiding the instructions. Uh, I've actually put enough of these together to pretty much know my way around the saw. Uh, it might be a good idea if you've not put these saws together to read through the instructions and make sure that you don't miss anything. It'll also help you to familiarize yourself with the saw as you're putting it together. But yeah, fairly easy, went together nicely. Okay, so let's talk about the turntable. Uh, it seems fairly standard. It has your extension arm here, you have your, your locking miter arm, you have your trigger to help you turn the table back and forth. Uh, also, these notches here are predetermined, so if you go and just want to hit zero, it'll lock into zero. Uh, the next one is 15 degree, and then you have 22 and a half, 30, and 45. Those seem to be pretty standard on most sliding miter saws. Uh, once you get to a degree that you want to work with, and let's say for example that you want to get in here to say 10 degrees, uh, you can lock your arm down and that will keep it from moving back and forth. Something else to point out, uh, Evolution Power Tools is a company based out of the UK where they use the metric system and centimeters and things of that nature. So. What's really kind of nice here is you actually have a combination of both where you have inches on the top and you have centimeters on the bottom. So if you're happy to be working with centimeters or inches, you've got yourself covered here. That's kind of cool also. Okay, so you have two areas in which you can lock the device in place. Now this is mainly to keep the blade down. Uh, you simply push down, release that, and your blade comes up and is ready to use lock that back into place and then you are at safe storage. This dial allows you to slide the miter back and forth. So if you're wanting to use this simply as a regular chop saw and you do not need the sliding feature, you can lock this into place and the slide will not activate. Okay, another nifty little device on here is a depth gauge. See this little screw here, this allows you to cut all the way down. You get full motion with the saw. Now, if you were to tighten this up a little bit, drop that bolt down below the surface, maybe you have a cut that you don't want to cut all the way through, you can lock that into place. Now it's gonna stop you from going all the way down. This clamp is able to fit on the left side of the saw. It also has the ability to fit on the right side of the saw. Same features, same method in locking it into place with that thumb screw. You can move this out of the place. You can bring it back into play if you need to. You can lock it in with this thumb screw here. You can adjust up and down, push the button, go higher, go lower. Again, I really like that feature there. Behind the back of the saw, there is an orange dial. You can set your degree and simply tighten up the, the dial behind here. And now you can cut at 30 degrees. Another cool little feature is your ability to slide this fence out. There is a thumb screw locking device here. You simply screw that into place and now your sliding fence stays exactly where it needs to stay. Another convenient feature is if you don't have the ability to leave your saw out and you need to pack it up each time, wrapping the cord around these little cord dividers keeps you all nice and neat. Okay, so I had to laugh a little bit. Along with the saw, they actually sent a box of items for me to cut. Um, so I have part of a tin roof, uh, a two by four, a shelf bracket, uh, a piece of tin or aluminum that for the ceiling, uh, you know, things, um, a piece of composite decking, 
and a piece of what looks to be inch and a half, probably eighth inch wall uh, steel tube. Okay, something I gotta point out right off the bat. Um, when I turn this on the very first time, it's almost as if it's battery operated because it takes a little bit of time for it to get going. Whereas most miter saws, you pull the trigger and they just go. This one takes an amp up time, or like a ramp up time. All right, so I set the angle at 15 degrees to cut the two by four and without noticing that sliding fence is not designed to handle any bevels. So the sliding fence has to be moved in order for you to be able to cut a bevel. This saw blade is designed to cut all kinds of things. Devolution, I would probably fix this in your next one. Something else to mention that the dust collecting bag doesn't seem to be doing too much. As far as my review on the 10 inch miter cutting saw, uh, I would like to first say that in my shop, I use tools hard. Uh, it's a metal shop, so I am doing a lot of fabrication, I'm cutting a lot of metals, and I would say that this tool is probably not the tool for my shop. However, if you are a woodworker or if you are a hobbyist, uh, and you're looking for a miter saw that uh, slides back and forth, it can handle the width, uh, also cuts the bevels, then this might be the saw for you. Uh, I've, I put a lot of faith in Evolution Power Tools because I really enjoy their, their metal tools. So a couple things that I would probably change about the saw before I'd actually use it on a daily basis in my shop. Uh, the sliding uh, piece back here. Uh, I would make sure that when it is in its resting point or in its closed position that if you were to take the saw to a 45 degree angle that it will miss that sliding plate. Uh, as you saw in the video, I was at a 15 degree angle and I hit it without any problems whatsoever. So that's something that probably should be taken care of uh, in the next edition. Something else that really kind of like keeps me from giving this a full 10. Um, when it starts up, it just doesn't come across as having the type of power needed to go the distance. Uh, it's kind of a very slow amp up until it hits speed. 
So it's probably psychological. Maybe it's a specialty thing in the motor that I'm unaware of, uh, but just doesn't instill confidence in the longevity of the machine. One of the things that I really do like uh, is this quick release. I wish I had that on uh, my current miter saw, and uh, that is that is really cool. So for that reason, I will you know keep this saw on the table and I will utilize it because um, I like that that quick release faction. And I'll probably just use it for wood. I probably won't use it for metal, although it did have the capability of cutting through. Uh, I, it felt a bit laborsome, uh, and that was probably due to the type of blade that I have on here. Evolution sent me the Evo 380, and I've been using that nonstop. I love that tool. That cuts all my metal that I need. But as far as the 10-inch sliding miter saw, hey, if you're a woodworker and you're a hobbyist, I think this would be a good saw for you. Give it a shot um, and see what you think. Check out some other reviews and let's see what they can do with this saw. Maybe in the future we'll, uh, we'll add a few changes to it and make this a little bit more bomber. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It's greatly appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so now. It would be greatly appreciated. Leave some comments, uh, leave some thumbs up, and kind of let me know what you thought. Maybe you have one, maybe you tried it, maybe you know I was just being a knucklehead and I just missed the sliding plate. <laughs> so we'll see you in the next video.